Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. I want to start off by saying that in these uh, strange times we find ourselves in right now, I hope that you, your family, your friends, your neighbors are all staying safe, staying healthy, staying smart. And uh, I hope that this uh, time of uh, isolation is um, going all right for you and uh, for yours. But speaking of isolation, uh, a topic came up on the Recording Rebels recently and it kind of got me to thinking. Remember, Paul Mann was doing some recording of singing and playing acoustic guitar at the same time and had a couple of questions about getting some separation between those two tracks. So I thought in the spirit of isolation and social distancing, uh, we might be able to play around with a few techniques and see if we might be able to improve the amount of separation we can get between a vocal track and an acoustic track when they're played at the same time. Now, a couple of things before we even begin. Uh, one thing I would recommend, if, if you really are having trouble getting that distance between vocals and acoustic guitar, or vocals and whatever instrument you're trying to play at the same time, I think my main piece of advice would be to just set up one microphone and record uh, yourself playing, both of them at the same time. Don't worry too much about you know how uh, perfect it sounds, just get a comfortable performance where the timing's right, the tempo's right, the dynamics are how you want them. And then use that as a guide track. Go back and record, you know, with just one or however many microphones, um, just your instrument. And then go back again and record just your vocals. And then mute the guide track and you're left with two perfectly isolated uh, tracks. Now we understand some people just, they, they struggle to get kind of the same performance that they would if they're not playing and singing at the same time. So in light of that, we're gonna try a couple of things here. This isn't something I do a whole lot myself, so this is kind of, a, you know, experiments for me. Um, but hopefully they'll get you thinking if, if you find yourself in this situation in, in your own home studio. And uh, hopefully we'll come up with a couple of techniques here that will help. I think one main thing we can do to prepare is just practice the dynamics of our voice relative to our instrument. If you are just like a really heavy, ham-fisted, you know, just bang on the guitar kind of player and you sing very quietly, uh, then that's, that's gonna be problematic. It's gonna be difficult, if not impossible, to get like a good degree of separation between those two tracks. And vice versa, if you're just a loud belter of a singer and you play guitar or whatever just really quietly, yeah, that's gonna have the same kind of problem. So a little bit of practice, a little bit of rehearsal and conscious kind of thinking about how you balance your voice versus your instrument, it's gonna go a long way. Now for demonstration purposes today, I've just come up with some just very silly little um, vignettes about the frustrations of being in quarantine and, and all the things kind of going on. Um, they're meant to just be mildly amusing and not really reflective of actions or attitudes that I hold or my family or anything like that. So also I don't play and sing at the same time very much anymore. And so um, pardon if my vocals are pitchy or terrible sounding or anything, but I think we can at least demonstrate the um, theory uh, if you'll just kind of be a little forgiving about the actual quality of my uh, playing and singing. So first thing to try is just a single microphone and um, you know just find you know since this is vocals and acoustic guitar we're talking about typically uh, like vocal oriented microphones um, like large diaphragm condensers are generally pretty good at both flattering how the human voice sounds and also flattering how an acoustic guitar sounds. So even if you just have one microphone, you can set it up and you'll just have to play around in three dimensions. You know, how far away uh, are you gonna put it? How close in are you gonna put it? How close to your voice versus how close to your instrument? You're just gonna have to kind of play around in a three dimensional space with your mic placement. Find that right balance where you get enough voice, enough acoustic guitar. The one drawback to doing it that way is that in post-production, your options are kind of limited. If you want to do something like apply compression to the vocal, but not the guitar, or maybe you want a little reverb just on the vocal, or maybe you have some, you know, pitch correction or something to do. If it's all baked into one track, um, that's, that's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to really individually treat one versus the other. 
there's so much overlap and frequency between the human voice and an acoustic guitar that um, doing something to one is gonna mess with the other one as well. There's some super fancy software out there in the world that can, you know, at least approach uh, treating each one individually. But uh, I think if you're gonna do it with one microphone, go into an understanding that you're gonna have to get the balance and everything right. Um, with your mic placement. And there's not a whole lot you're gonna be able to do individually in post-production. I think that one's self-explanatory enough, so we won't bother demonstrating that one. But what we really wanna do here, uh, in my mind, is end up with two tracks, uh, one for the vocals and one for the guitar. And we wanna be able to treat them individually in post-production. So most of us have at least one, uh, if not a couple, of like cardioid pattern microphones. And you know, cardioid is by and large the most common pattern you're gonna find in microphones you're probably gonna have around your home studio. Now I have a couple of microphones here that are both capable of multiple patterns. They can do not only cardioid, but they can do omni, figure eight, and a couple of other patterns in between. I understand not everybody has multi-pattern microphones just laying around, but if you're in the market for a new microphone, maybe this um, might be a little bit of incentive to look at microphones that are capable of multiple patterns. Even though probably 95% of the time you're just gonna use it in cardioid pattern anyways, I think today we can demonstrate why other patterns might be a little helpful for you. Okay, let's take a quick look at what I've got here. So for a vocal mic, I'm gonna be using an Aventone CV-12. This is a multi-pattern tube condenser, large diaphragm condenser. And that's just what I'm gonna be using on vocals. And down here, I have an AKG C414. This is the XLS, not the XL2. So this one doesn't have that vocal presence peak that um, flatters vocals so much. It's a little, little bit more neutral in the high end. So I'm really good at flattering instruments like an acoustic guitar. For right now, uh, both the C414 and the CV12 are gonna be just in regular old cardioid pattern. So let's see what we might be able to do with uh, just a couple of cardioid microphones and what kind of separation we can get. Okay, I, I'm trying to kind of illustrate here, um, you know, about how far away, I know it's camera angles are weird and they make things look uh, perspective uh, a little different, but I'll be singing into the mic maybe about uh, four to six inches away, which is pretty close. Uh, and then I have the mic on the acoustic guitar, yeah, maybe six inches away. Again, that's pretty close. The reason why I have them so close is because I can set the gains appropriate for me singing very close. And for the vocal mic, my voice is going to be considerably louder than anything else that the mic is uh, gonna pick up. Same for the guitar mic. It's much closer to the guitar than anything else, and that's gonna help the guitar be louder than anything else that the mic is picking up. There are trade-offs here. Uh, the closer you get, the more proximity effect you get. Um, that can make things sound boomy and muddy. They might need some extra attention in post-processing, but that's kind of a trade-off we're just dealing with here. All right, let's give this a try and see what we end up with. One, two, three, four. It's a beautiful, sunny day It doesn't matter anyway I'm stuck in my house and I'm starting to go stir crazy Now you may have noticed when you listen to both of these uh, at the same time you hear kind of a weird kind of swishy sound that is comb filtering that is phase cancellation and that's because these two microphones are hearing enough of the same things just from a slightly different perspective that there's some cancellation happening and it gives it that kind of odd sound. We'll combat that problem maybe in another video. <laughs> let's focus on one thing at a time here and just focus on separation. Okay, so let's hear just the guitar track and let's see how much vocal bled into that. One, two, three, four. Okay, there's definitely more guitar than vocal in it, but there's still a lot of vocal bleed into that guitar track. Let's hear the vocal track and see how much guitar bled into it. One, two, three, four. It's a beautiful, sunny day. It 
doesn't matter anyway. Okay, still a fair amount of bleed both ways. The guitar's got quite a bit of vocal on it. The vocal's got quite a bit of guitar on it. So I think you can kind of already see, you know, two cardioid mics. It's okay, but just not great when it comes to separation. Okay, so what I've done this time, I've left uh, this microphone just exactly the same way it was. And the one on the guitar here, you can see that I've flipped it on its side here. And I've also put it into its figure eight mode here. So that means it's going to be hearing very sensitive from the front and from the back, but it's going to be very insensitive from the sides here. So I have arranged it so that this side is pointing right at my face. And so hopefully this is going to reject a lot of my voice in the guitar track. Uh, this one here, gonna sound just the same because I haven't changed a thing, but let's see what we end up with here. One, two, three, four. Hold up and hide away. Wait for another day to bring your snot nosed little hell spawn to the grocery store. Okay, let's take a listen to just that guitar track. One, two, three, four. Okay, like that figure eight pattern really did uh, a lot of good there, right? You can tell like there is way less vocal bleeding into that guitar track. Let's listen to the vocal track. One, two, three, four. Hole up and hide away. Wait for another day. Okay. So that's just the same as the last one, same mic, same pattern, pretty much same distance and everything. So yeah, no big surprise there. Okay, so what I've got here this time, uh, the one on the guitar is gonna be exactly the same, laying on its side, figure eight mode, uh, the null on the side pointed towards my face. And now I've just done the same thing with the vocal mic. I put it in figure eight mode and I've laid it on its side and arranged it so that the front is gonna be pointing at my face and the side here is gonna be pointing eh, pretty much at the guitar. So hopefully now we'll end up with two pretty well separated tracks. Let's uh, give it a try, see how it goes. One, two, three, four. It's a beautiful day to be so righteous. Throw down, I'll fist fight you for the last six pack of Charmin Ultra Saw. Okay, let's hear just that guitar track. One, two, three, four. It's a beautiful day to be so righteous. So same thing as before. It's the same mic, same position, same pattern. So that figure eight rejecting quite a bit of the vocals. Uh, you're just getting that kind of roomy reflection of the vocals uh, and, and not much at all of the direct sound of the vocals. So that's pretty cool. And let's hear the just the vocal track and see how much of the guitar it rejected. One, two, three, four. It's a beautiful day to be so righteous. Throw down, I'll fist fight ya for the last six pack. Okay, yeah, you can tell like that figure eight pattern on that mic, you know, also did a really good job like that. That guitar is so much more distant now. You know, it, it's not gone by any means and there's really nothing that we can do in this kind of setup to make it perfectly separated. But those two tracks are pretty separated from each other. They're pretty distant from one another. Uh, that's going to make it considerably easier to individually treat them in post-processing. Okay, and so what I've got this time is the same setup as last time, two figure eight mics. And this time you can see in the background, I have got my acoustic screens deployed here. I'm just wanting to see if this will remove some of the roominess of the vocal that's being picked up in here and uh, see if they'll separate them even more. Let's give this a try, see how it goes. One, two, three, four. Hey, babe. 
what you're making We're all out of ham and bacon So dinner is a can of Rotel And some Girl Scout cookies all right, let's listen to just the guitar track and let's see if that did any good to get rid of some of that roomy sound on the vocals. One, two, three, four. Hey babe, watch your bacon. We're all out of Okay, that did make a positive difference. It was a pretty subtle difference, but the, the vocal bleed into that guitar track doesn't sound as roomy, and that was kind of a lot of what we were hearing in the last try. And let's see if the gobo made any difference on the voc on the guitar bleeding into the vocal. One, two, three, four. Hey babe, what ya making? We're all out of ham and bacon. I think it did actually make a subtle difference again. Uh, I, that's actually pretty cool. You know, it didn't make just like a major huge difference. It didn't just, you know, remove the bleed altogether, but it does kind of make sense, you know, take some of the reflections out of the room. And since we have the null of each microphone pointed at an unwanted source, um, the direct sound is mostly gonna be rejected. And a lot of the bleed that it's picking up is ambient noise. Maybe with a little more work on positioning of the microphones, positioning of the gobos, you might be able to make even more positive difference, get even more separation. But to reiterate what I had said before, I think the only way to get perfect separation is to just record them separately in the first place. But yeah, I understand. Some people just uh, lose uh, a little bit of the magic when they try to do that. They're just so used to playing and singing at the same time. So hopefully these kind of different things start to get you thinking. Uh, if you find yourself in this situation in your own home studio, maybe you do like to record like this. And hey, if you do, and uh, you've tried some things that have worked, let us know down in the comments. If you got any ideas, any advice or anything that might help us out, let us know. But I think that is gonna do it for me this time, and I will see you guys again next time.